Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So as promised, I'm making more minimalism content for you. So if you haven't subscribed, please make sure you do so right now. But more importantly, that notification bell is switched on. Now this video is actually the follow up video with more wisdom, hacks, tips, tricks, and ideas and inspiration for your minimalism journey. It is a continuation on with my words of wisdom as to how to apply minimalism in your life, to go deeper with it, to embrace it more, to be more part of the incredible journey and benefits that come from this lifestyle movement. So this is perfect for anyone who's interested in minimalism, just wants to know a little bit more and dip their toe in to the people like myself who have completely embraced this amazing movement. Now on the subject of minimalism and people who've embraced minimalism, I would love to hear from you as to what area in your life you have applied minimalism that has given you the biggest and best benefit. I have made so many videos about how to apply minimalism in different areas such as makeup, cleaning products, bathroom products, um, your wardrobe, your finances, um, your food, your friendship circles. But I would love to hear from you, what is an area that's given you the biggest and best benefit? Now for me, I have to say, it's probably been my mindset, minimizing my distractions for more clarity, focus and motivation. That's probably been the best benefit. But I would love to hear from you in case there's an area that I haven't thought about before of applying minimalism. So your feedback and your, your insights and your advice and experience would be so incredibly valuable for me. So please put a comment in the comment box below. All right, getting straight onto this video, my remaining top bits of five advice for you when it comes to embracing minimalism in your life. Advice number one is to declutter responsibly. So many times people go through a spring clean when there's like a council clean up and they go through their whole entire home and dump so much stuff on the street. And yes, this is a brilliant um, kickstart or um, motivation to, to get into this. But the problem is so much of the stuff that we dump on our streets actually ends up in landfill. So it ends up being incredibly destructive to our environment. And of course, some people say, well, that's okay. I actually go and take my stuff to my local charity. That is also much, much better. However, I had the honor of actually going to the Tempe Salvation Army store, which is their flagship store, and seeing and talking to all the staff members there and seeing how incredibly overloaded and overwhelmed they are because so many people are just mindlessly dumping stuff there. And yes, the stuff that they get, they can sell, sometimes not all of it, but some of it they can sell, and if they can't sell it, they'll try and send it overseas so that there is zero waste. But the problem is, is they can't handle so much stuff. Their rooms are literally piled high. There aren't enough people coming in buying this stuff to get rid of it. And as a result, it's incredibly overwhelming. So what a fantastic way of disposing of these items in your home with a more responsible and respectful approach is before you go and dump it on the street or put it at your, in your charity bin, have a go at selling it to the second hand economy. Now, when you do this, not only does it skip going into landfill, but you're actually helping someone out. They're able to buy something that they potentially could not afford at the full price. It is so much more responsible and respectful to the environment to go through this process first. Also, if you're really passionate, like me, about supporting charities, the money that you collect from selling um, this item on the secondhand economy, and remember, you can use eBay, Gumtree, Craigslist, buy, sell, swap groups on Facebook. There's so many amazing platforms for the secondhand economy. Any money that you make, you can still give that to charity. So you are still doing the right thing, both from a materialistic perspective and from an environmental perspective. Advice number two is to get professional help if you need it. There's absolutely no shame in doing that. If something happened to me where I had like a sore back, I would go and see a specialist, like a physio. You know what, you can't do it all yourself. There are sometimes times in our lives where we feel so overwhelmed, anxious and overloaded. We don't even know where to start, but we know we want to embrace something and try something new and create an important, powerful shift in our lives. This is a great opportunity to get someone in to help you, to help you through the process. So in these situations, if you want to incorporate minimalism, but just feel like this is block that's holding you back, Definitely look into investing in the services of a professional declutterer or even some cleaning services that can help come into your home with a fresh perspective and know exactly what the steps and strategies need to be applied to help you get you where you want. 
Now, I'm not saying you just pass the buck on to someone else and they do it for you. You can actually be involved in the process. Sit down with a declutterer, go through your home with them, explain to them how it makes you feel. Explain to them the areas that are the biggest and worst triggers for you. Even with a cleaner, make sure your home, make sure you're helping them clean the home so you can watch and learn and see what they're doing so that you know how to maintain that cleanliness, that you know space in your home, that approach, the strategies. You learn so much from them. There is absolutely no shame in doing that. And if anything, I would look at the cost of this as an investment in your mental health. Advice number three is to have your own minimalism mantra. Just like Marie Kondo has the, you know, whatever sparks joy in your life gets to stay. Well, mine is I only buy what I love, value, use and appreciate. And you're more than welcome to have this mantra for yourself. And there are plenty of them available online. If you just look on Instagram or Pinterest or even Google, um, minimalism quotes, you will find so many. Anything that really stands out and resonates with you, that could be your minimalism mantra. And that can be what plays through your head as you're walking through a shopping mall or looking at things online or watching ads on TV. This can help minimize the temptation and the distractions that will naturally come your way in the world that we live in. Advice number four is to embrace zero waste as part of your minimalism journey. One of the many benefits of minimalism is not only saving money, but also reducing your impact on the environment. Because you find that you become naturally very resourceful with the things that you have. You learn to make things last a lot longer. You learn to use things in a multifunctional way. So this is a fantastic way of learning more about zero waste and how you can have a bigger and better impact. But also how you can learn to use your voice around your family and friends, but also around your local businesses. So for example, if I'm buying a muffin or some banana bread um, at a cafe, I will often say to them, please don't give me a paper bag or a napkin. I'm just going to take it as is so that I reduce my usage. Also, one of my favorite cafes, Bruce's, which is around the corner from my office, I noticed that whilst they love zero waste and they're all about reducing their impact on the environment and doing the right ethical thing, they had these wooden chopsticks that could only be used once but had to be thrown out. So I gently suggested to them that they get these metal chopsticks that I found at one of my local supermarkets. And I actually went and ended up buying them for them because they were really cost effective. And it was great. I made my voice count. And from that, it triggered so many interesting conversations about other things that they can do and I can do to help reduce the impact on the environment. So make your voice count when it comes to embracing minimalism with zero waste. Advice number five is look for the lessons. As you go through minimalism, it's never a straight, easy path. It's gonna be windy, you're gonna be going uphill, you're gonna be going downhill, it's gonna be straight and boring, and then it's gonna be confusing and you might fall off the path. That is perfectly natural and normal, particularly in the world that we live in where we're constantly exposed to ads, we're exposed to social media with these people with all this stuff and this glamorous life. That is perfectly normal and natural, but you need to stay on your path as much as you can. And when you do fall off, which I do as well, I make sure I quickly catch myself and I look for the lesson. I look for what the universe is trying to teach me. I look for whatever it was that triggered me so that I can make sure I take on a sense of personal growth, development and awareness so I can avoid this from happening again. Minimalism is not about depriving yourself. It's not about living like a monk. It's not about like being cruel or, you know, just holding yourself back from experiencing things far from it. It's about letting go of the things that don't belong there so that you've got more space to accept the more beautiful experiences, fulfilling values, greater awareness and understanding of the world around you so that you live a happier, more authentic life. So always look for the lessons as you go through the minimalism journey and don't beat yourself up when you just happen to maybe buy maybe three pairs of new stiletto shoes that you really fell in love with that you really want and are going to make sure that you love values and appreciate all the time. All right, everyone. So that is it for this video. Please let me know by putting a comment in the comment box below as to the biggest and best area that you have applied minimalism in your life, because I'm sure there are plenty of areas that I have not discovered yet. And I'd love to be able to share this with you through more video content. Now on that note, also, if you have any special video requests, please also put them in the comment box below. Have a fantastic week, everyone. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Ciao for now.